Okay, welcome back. The demo I'm going to do now is an actual experiment that we do in class. It's called lenses and image formation and uh, uh, the use of the spirometer. We illustrate the use of the spirometer to determine the curvature of a converging lens. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a light bulb like this. That's going to be our source of light. And then we're going to put a lens like this, a converging lens. And then we're going to put a screen. And then we can move the distance between the... Uh, the lens and the light bulb, that's called DO, we can adjust that. And then we can adjust the distance between the screen and the lens, that's called DI. And then so once we adjust this, we can adjust that until we get a sharp image. And then we're testing the equation, 1 over DO plus 1 over DI is equal to 1 over the focal length. So once I get my DO and DI, I can put this in and then I can calculate the experimental focal length, right? And then I can compare that to the focal length that I get from the equation uh, of focal length. So if you have a curved lens like this, and then this side of the curvature is in the real world, that's called R1. This side of the lens is curved this way, that's called R2. This is in the virtual world. So we have 1 over F theoretical is equal to N minus 1, the index of refraction of the glass, minus 1 because the surrounding medium is air times the 1 over the radius of curvature of this side of the lens, which is positive, so this side is going to be positive, minus 1 over R2, and then the radius of curvature of the opposite side, since it's facing this way, that one's going to be negative. In the ex actual experiment we do, we actually measure the radius of curvature of both of the uh, sides, R1 and R2, and they come out slightly different. For our demo, to make it a little simple, I'm going to just measure the radius of curvature R1. I'm going to assume that R2 is pretty much the same as R1, but just negative of it. So then if that is the case, this equation becomes a little bit simplified. If they're exactly equal, we have 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2 is going to equal negative of R1 if we assume that they're exactly identical. And then the 2 adds up, you get a plus sign. Right? And then you end up adding them, so you get one over so you get one over f theoretical is equal to n minus one, and then when you add them you get two over r. And I don't even have to call it r1 anymore. So uh, we're gonna do two times index of refraction minus one over r, and then we're gonna measure the radius of curvature of just one of the sides and then use that to calculate the uh, F-theoretical, and then we're going to compare F-experimental to F-theoretical, right? So, now in order to calculate the radius of curvature of the uh, lens, I use a tool called the spherometer. So a spherometer comes as a tripod, like here, it has three legs, and it, right in the middle, this is an equilateral triangle, right in the middle is a movable arm that I could move up and down. So, first I'm going to put this on a curved surf on, on a straight flat surface, right? So you have a, a equilateral triangle like this. So I'm, I need to measure the distance between the legs and they're all equal. So I just, as long as I measure one of them, right? And then the middle arm is right in the middle of that equilateral triangle. So that uh, when I put it on the flat surface, I'll have a baseline reading, what the micrometer reading is for baseline. So I'll do H flat, I'm calling that. Then I'll put that, uh, um, after that, I'll put this on the curved surface of the lens. So here's the lens that I'm using. So you can tell here it's curved this way and it's curved this way. So I'll put this on the curved surface of the lens. So of course, because it's curved, if I want it to sit straight, I'm going to have to move this middle arm up a bit because it, it, is, it has a certain curvature. So I'm measuring the curvature of that lens. So I'm putting this, uh, the, imagine this is my lens like here. I'm putting the three legs like this and one on the, uh, the opposite end like that. And then the middle arm has to go up by a certain amount. So I'm measuring basically, imagine this is the plane of the leg like this. This H that I have to go up from the flat reading so that the middle leg barely touches the curved surface of the lens. So that's called H. So after I measure H uh, curved, 
for the curved mirror, then I subtract them h curved minus h flat, and that gives me the h value. Okay, the radius of curvature of that sphere is going to equal d squared over 6h plus h over 2. Okay, the distance between the legs squared divided by 6 of this h value plus h over 2. In the class, usually I give the students extra credit if they can uh, prove this equation, if they can prove the radius of curvature of a sphere equation from the d squared over the h and the h over 2. So it's given as an extra credit. So then let's measure the h flat first. So I'll put this over a flat surface. Okay, so you can see here, in order to read the spherometer, I look here first at the the readings here. So you can see the, the edge here, the top of the spherometer is a little bit above zero. You can see here the 25 millimeter mark is matching with the rod. So that means it's 25 hundredth of a millimeter above zero. So now if I were to go down to zero, and the zero matches the rod, then tilt like this, then that would be my reference. That would be exactly zero. It's matching with zero. It's a little bit below zero, but that is fine. So now, for us, our base reading was 25 like that. So we're 25 hundredth of a millimeter above zero. So that would be my H flat. Okay, and now come down and just barely touch the curved surface of the mirror. The curved surface of the lens. Okay, and now let's do the reading. So now we are above one millimeter, above one millimeter, and then how much above one? We look over here and we see the 70 lines up. So that would be 1.70, 1 1.70 millimeters. So then if you subtract them, h flat, h curved, you're gonna get the h value, which is the sagittal distance between the plane of the three legs and the curved surface of the mirror in the middle, right? So the h is gonna be the difference of the two, 1.70 minus 1.20, that's uh, minus 1.70 minus uh, 0.25, that's gonna be 1.45 millimeters, and then change that to centimeter, so that's gonna be 0.145 centimeters. Okay, the next thing to do is to dis determine the distance between the legs. It's going to be 4.45 centimeters. 4.45 centimeters. So that's my uh, D, 4.45 centimeters. Now let's use this equation, the radius of curvature is going to be, the radius of curvature comes out 22.8 centimeters, 22.8 centimeters. Then I use the equation 1 over the focal length is going to be 2 times n minus 1 over r. Since this glass plate is a crown glass, the index of refraction is 1.52. So we have here 1.52 minus 1 over the radius of curvature. Okay, so then uh, I'm keeping here everything in centimeters, 1.9 centimeters. Okay, the experimental one we're going to actually uh, find by, the, by this equation, one, 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance is 1 over the focal length. And then we'll compare that to that result, okay? Okay, so you can see here, this is my light source. And then there's a ruler here that I can read where the light source is. So I'll put the position of the light source on a distance of 110 centimeters. So you can adjust this, move this around. So I'll put this at 110, right? And then over here is the holder for the lens. So then I can put the lens inside of there. And then there is my screen. Okay, now I put the lens in the lens holder. And then here is the screen. Then you can see here I'm getting an image, right? Generally speaking, if the lens is close to the object, if I bring the lens close to the light source, my, my uh, uh, image is going to be very far. 
in order to get a good image I'm going to have to go farther and farther and it's going to be kind of like here. Okay, so this is looks like it's about the best image. So this is this happens when if the ob, uh, if the object which is my light source is within a little bit farther away than the focal point. Remember the focal length of our lens was uh 21 the expected focal length of the lens is about 21 centimeters. So if I'm over the 21 centimeters, if I'm larger than 21 centimeters, which in this case I am farther than 21, but I'm not too much farther than 21 centimeters. So then my image is going to come out to be uh, really large. Now, if I uh, make my lens further out, the further out I make the lens, then I'm going to get a small diminished image. Okay, so over here, if I adjust the distance, you can see this is the best image right here. So, I'm going to bring in the lens closer, something like this, centimeter mark. So the distance between 80, you can tell this is 80, and then this one was 110, right? So that's going to be 30 centimeters. So that's my DO is 30. Let's uh, record that. And now I can move the screen. My paper is going to be the screen right here. I can move the screen until I get the best image. You see right now it's fuzzy. It gets better, better. Right now it gets also fuzzy. So the best image, you can tell by the, the, the top of the light bulb. The, fi the light fixture is uh, gold. See right here, the top is fuzzy. So as you br as I bring it up, the gold color shows really well. Then as I bring it closer, it gets fuzzy again. See, so right here is the best. Okay, so then you look over here where the paper is, and it's about the four right there. It's coinciding the four. So what is that? 34. Okay, now I'm going to also illustrate the double lens uh, problem. What if I put the similar kind of lens right here and I put it at the 50 centimeter mark, right? What is the expected location of the final image? Assu I'm going to assume that the focal length of this lens, which is similar curvature to this, I'm going to assume that they're the same. So I'm putting it 30 centimeters away from the, the, the first lens. Then I'm going to measure where the final image is. Okay, let's move the screen around. Right. You see, look at the, the fixture of the light bulb. The gold right there is nice and sharp. Okay, so you can see it's at the 39 centimeter mark. So let's do the calculations of the first one when I just had one lens. Uh, my DO was 30 centimeters. Okay, 1 over 30 plus 1 over DI was the image distance and my DI was 80 minus 34. So that would be uh, 46 centimeters, right? So that's uh, 46 centimeters, okay? So then I put one over 46, that's equal to one over F experimental. So just add this and then reciprocate it and that'll give me the focal length of that lens experimental. F experimental is 18.2 centimeters, right? And then I'm gonna compare that to F theoretical. So I'm within about three centimeters from each other, right? Remember when I did F theoretical, I assumed the radius of curvature of the two ends were the same, which might not have been the case. It might not have been exactly identical. So I should have actually measured both of them, right? So even though considering that, uh, and also the other sources of error, because I'm by myself doing the best image, trying to determine the best image while videotaping, so it makes it hard. So I'm within three centimeters, so I can get my percent error between that and error, okay? So then how do we do the double lens uh, problem, okay? So now I have a lens, uh, the distance between my light bulb and the first lens, lens one, is still 30 centimeters. Then I have another lens 30 centimeters 
The, the second lens is 30 centimeters from the first lens. Remember, this was at the 80 centimeter mark, and the second lens was at the 50 centimeter mark. So I have another lens here. Uh, the distance between them is 30 centimeters, right? And then the and then the final image came out 11 centimeters from the second lens. So we can say DI experimental, when we actually perform the experiment, the final image came out 11 centimeters from the second lens. So now let's do the theory about that. Well, in order to do the theory, I'm going to assume they're both the same focal length. Now, which focal length should I use, the 18.2 or the 21.9? Well, both of them have inherent error. This one depends on how good the image that I got, the distance of the image, maybe I didn't get the best image. This one, I assume the radius of curvature of the two ends were the same, and when I was doing the spherometer reading, maybe I didn't really read it well. Uh, I should have you know, read it more carefully, maybe had another partner to double check my reading. So there is inherent error in both of them, that by my, but my gut feeling tells me this is probably more reliable even though it's experimental, because to find the best image was a little bit easier, okay, in this case. So let's assume the focal length of both of them is 18.2, 18.2, 18 18.2, use that as my focal length. So what would the theory tell me where is the final image? The theoretical final image based on that focal length, right? So here's what's gonna happen you're gonna to have to find out where the final image will be due to the first lens. So you're gonna say one over 30 plus one over di is one over 18.2. So predict where the image of the first lens would have been. And it's probably gonna be over here, right? Uh, di is 46 centimeters. Well, you shouldn't be surprised because that's what we got here, 46 centimeters. So since I'm using the experimental focal length, I'm going to get the same answer as 46 that I got when I actually ran the experiment. So if the, first lens, the second lens is not there, the first lens will produce an image 46 centimeters away from it, right, to the right, uh, to the right of the first lens, which is what we saw. But now this lens will prevent that image from forming. That image will, won't actually form. So what's going to happen? The location of where that image will be will act as a virtual object to the second lens. That image never actually formed, but imagine as if the image did form, right? It's a, it was an image that was inverted, right? And it was enlarged and it was inverted. That image won't actually form, but we could imagine as if it formed and it would form how many centimeters away from the second lens, right? So if the distance from the first lens is 46 and the distance between the lenses is 30, that means this image will form, if the second lens permits, it will form 16 centimeters to the right of the second lens, right? So DO will be 16, right? So DO will be 16 centimeters, right? Because it's the distance between where the image will form and the second lens. But it's actually negative 16. Why? Because that image never actually forms. It's known as a virtual image, non-existent image. Virtual, non-existent image. Right? So we, in order to uh, let the equations know that it's non-existence, we put here negative. Then we apply the equation again. Uh, 1 over DO plus 1 over DI is 1 over F. 1 over negative 16 plus 1 over di is 1 over f, and f I'm using 18.2, right? So then 1 over di is going to equal 1 over 18.2 plus 1 over 16, right? 1 over 18.2 plus 1 over 16. So now notice, because it was a virtual object, it went over there and became a plus. So then I'm going to uh, calculate that. Okay, so you can see that I'm, again, about two to three centimeters away from the experimental answer. Okay, so my result is pretty good. So my percent error will be 100% uh, times, but you can see we are within reasonable uh, percent error of the sources of error that I didn't check every all the curvatures, I didn't check the focal length of all the lenses. But you can also see from this experiment 
how to perform a double lens uh, um, problem and you can see the concept of a virtual uh, object, an, an image acting as a virtual object for the second lens but because it never actually formed, okay? So let's calculate the percent error. So from this experiment you can learn a lot of things. Uh, the other thing that I could also show you is how to calculate the magnification of the final image. You'd notice that when I actually ran the experiment, the final image, when I had two lenses, was actually smaller than the object, right? So how do you calculate the predicted uh, height of the final image? Well, the magnification equation is negative di over do, right? The magnification, so the di theoretical over the do, theor uh, the do right? But since I have double lenses, I'm going to do di over do1 times negative di over do2. Two, right? So I'm going to have two magnifications. Each lens will create a magnification. Now the first lens, you will magnify it, right? So then that's this, this gives you the magnification of the first lens. So negative, remember the DI for the first lens was 46 centimeters. The DO was 30. So the first lens will invert it, right? Negative DI over DO. And so you can, that's why when I did the first lens, the image was inverted, right? Now the second lens, what is that going to do? Negative, but the di, uh, negative, and then di is what? 8.51, and then what's do? Here's a crucial thing. Do is also negative, right? Uh, negative uh, 16 it was, right? And then when I took it over to the other side, it became positive. So I put do negative 16. You would think if you have two lenses, one of them inverts it, and the other one inverts it again, and then the final image comes out, uh, uh, right side up, right? But you didn't see that. When I actually ran the experiment, the final image, even when I had two lenses, was, was still uh, upside down. So how, why is that? Well, because these two negatives cancel each other, right? Negative, and the, the fact that the second object is a virtual object, those two cancel each other, and then this negative stays. So that means the final image is still inverted, but it's gonna be now smaller. It's an inverted, smaller image. Okay, so let's calculate the magnification of that image. Is the image should be 81.6% of the size of the object, right? 81.6%. And if you look back at the video, you can see that the image was slightly smaller. So if we were doing an experiment here, what I would actually do is take the vernier caliper, measure the height of the image with the vernier caliper, uh, measure the height of the original light bulb, divide the two. The, um, uh, divide the height of the image over the height of the object. And because the image is inverted, I'll put the negative myself. The equation of the experimental magnification doesn't have a negative itself, but I put the negative because the image is inverted. So I should get something like, let's say the image is 10 centimeters, negative 10. So I put the negative 10, and then the object might be something like 13, 14 centimeters, 12, 13, something like that, right? So then that would be a reasonable result. If you do the ratio of this, you should get something like 80%, right? And then the negative, I put it in myself, okay? So this is a really good demo, and it's also an experiment that we do, and you also learn about how to do problems with double lenses, okay? Thank you very much.